I'm Bruce Blitz, and welcome to Cartooning with Blitz. I have a question to ask you. What do you see here? That's right, it's definitely a dog, but what else? It's a flea walking the dog. Now, that's something you don't see every day, is it? Usually the dog walks the flea or walks with fleas. Anyway, that's what we'll be doing today, cartoon animals. And cartoon animals is one of my favorite areas of cartooning. And later on for our feature of the day, we'll be drawing cartoon animals from live subjects at the Lowry Park Zoo in Florida. So stay tuned for that. I know you don't want to miss it. And for our doodle trick portion, animal alphabet tunes. Finish cartoon animals from simple letters in the alphabet. Anybody can do this. Stay tuned. I know you'll enjoy it. So if you're ready, all right. Let's draw cartoon animals. Now this first subject, a great creature to draw, the walrus. A beautiful animal, and it makes a great cartoon character. And we'll start with some simple shapes. So stay with me on this one. We'll start with an oval right here. Okay, now right here we'll make a half circle and two black dots for his nose. Now here another half circle for his eyes. And then just make two black dots and some eyebrows. All right, now, they're usually known for having those big floppy mustaches. And that's what makes them a great cartoon character, right there. So back and forth motions like that, get your whole wrist into it, can't go wrong. Now for his tusks. And these tusks are what he uses to dig when he's underwater for his food. All right, now. Follow me, we're going to make one continuous line. There's his head, and now we're going to continue down, and we're going to make his back fin like this, coming around, and let's go back. Now let's put in his flippers. Put one here, and his stomach, just a curved line like that. And on this side here, we'll continue this down, and we'll have his other flipper supporting his massive body weight. There, I like that. Let's put his, the rest of his body in there. Now, let's put him on a chunk of ice. They say there's nothing more impressive and glorious a sight to see a walrus in Alaska sitting on a chunk of ice. And to make a chunk of ice, you just make a free form shape like that. And then we just three-dimensionalize it like we're doing now. Now, let's put some water in the background. Yeah, came out nice. And let's give him some whiskers. And some clouds. Okay. Now let's put some color into this guy. Walrus. They can grow up to be 3,000 pounds. How's that? That's pretty big. And they can be uh, up to 12, 13 feet long. That's pretty big. That's two of me. I'm 6'1". Uh, I'll be 6'2 in January. And here's some tune tan around here. And we're not going to color it all in. The light is hitting this side here. This side wouldn't have as much color. Now, put some blue in the background. Now, the walrus was to the, to the Eskimos, is to the Eskimos, what the uh, buffalo was to the uh, Native Americans. They got all the food and clothing from them. But now, unfortunately, the uh, walrus is an endangered species, and there's laws protecting them. All right, let's see what else. How about a little cheeky red for his cheeks? I like that. Hey, I put some blue in this. This is how you make the ice look like it's got some shine to it. Some up and down lines like that. And there you have it. Take a look at this. Because this is a well-meaning looking character, I'm going to play some well-meaning jolly music. Ready? <laughs> All right, let's do another one. Now I've got a trick to show you. And it all starts with the same shape three times. And from this, we're going to be able to draw three different characters. I'll tape this down. All right, let's start with this guy over here. Now, right here, if we put little ears on him like this, and let's see, we'll give him a V for a nose, and a big smile. Let's give him circles for eyes, looking at us. And right here, his leg. It doesn't come out too far. And another leg peeking out this side. And a, now here's what's going to also do it. A big fluffy tail. You got a cartoon squirrel. See? Now the second one, same shape to start with. Let's make 
a rabbit. We'll give him a triangle for a nose and some whiskers. And let's give him just black dots for eyes and eyebrows. And of course, we've got to give him the old floppy ears. Let's have this one bent down like that. And okay, now for his legs, it starts the same, but it comes out a lot further because they use them for jumping, right? And the other one's back here. Now for his tail, a little fluffy cotton tail. And there's another character. Now for the third one, okay, we'll make him a mouse. So we've got to give him big ears, one there, and the other one peeking out from behind. And let's give him, let's give him a black dot for a nose and a smile. He gets some whiskers too. And let's see, for eyes, let's give him lines and some eyebrows. And for his tail, well, his tail's unlike the other ones too, so I'm going to give him like a long whip-like tail that will double that line coming back. And for his legs, well, they start the same as well, and they're pretty much like the squirrel. Actually, they're from the same family, the rodent family. There you go, like that? It's a neat little trick to know. All right, oops. It's time for the pun of the day. You know what puns are? Neat little way to illustrate a gag, because words have different meanings. You tell me what this is. Ready? That's right. Booty and the bees. Like the movie, Booty and the Bees. All right, let's continue. <laughs> now I got a neat thing. Oh, did you ever hear it said when people look like their pets or pets look like their people? Doesn't matter which way it is, because we're going to show that to you right now. Let's start with a guy named Mel. Let's start with his eye. Just like that. And we'll have him looking at us with an eyebrow. And here's his nose. Well, he's going to have a really big nose. Comes all the way out here. And he's got a real full chin. That's a full chin, isn't it? And some hair coming out this way, and an ear right there. And let's give him a big smile. And here's his neck. Now, over here, we've got his pet. Now, what do you see what his pet is? Same line we're going to start with, except this is going to be a beak. And you may have already guessed, that's going to be a pelican. That's right. And I'll make the same kind of eye, because that can be the same. And an eyebrow. And we can give him some feathers in the front. And the back of his head is like that. And here's his neck. And there you have it. People look like their pets. Pets look like their people. And right here we've got Mel. And for the pelican, his nickname is Pell. Mel and Pell. All right. I got another quick trick to show you. Like before, only this one is called Dog Tricks. And we'll start with a hot dog. And a hot dog is drawn just like this. And right here we'll draw, what, is, what do dogs like to eat? That's right, they like to eat bones. So we'll draw a bone right here. And what is the sound that dogs make? Woof. Woof. So, W, O, O, F for wolf. Okay, let's go back to the hot dog. If we add a little black dot right there, black square with a little white dot in there, and a line coming out with his tongue out like that, and here's his eyes that we're going to make it look like he's closed a little bit, his eyebrows up. That's right. From a hot dog, we've got a hot dog. He looks hot. His tail, his back legs. I squirt a little mustard on this guy. All right, now let's go right to the bone. Now watch this. Same thing. We'll put a nose in over here. And let's see. Well, let's make a big old smile. Go right up that shape. Some dots for whiskers. And we've got a tongue out here. Let's see. Let's give him a half circle for eyes and two black dots and eyebrows. Let's give him floppy ears like this. Yeah, that's a great character. And there's a dog. All right, now let's do the woof. Woof, woof. Cut these right in half. And let's put his eyes in. And here's his nose. And some whiskers. And there you go with his tongue. And this F, well, that's going to turn into one of his ears. And we'll do one over there. And we'll do the top of his head. Now let's draw his body. A U. And then his feet go out this way, one this way, his paws. And let's see, we'll have a, his foot coming out this side. And his tail wagging. And you see this here? That's what I call a happy ending. <laughs> 
And ending is a key word here because that's all we have time for right now in the studio. But now stay tuned for the feature of the day, and we'll go to the Lowry Park Zoo and draw the animals up close. <laughs> Now for our feature today, we'll go to the zoo, and my friend and I will give you the grand tour. This is a mandrill, and we'll draw him later. And zoos and aquariums are great places to see animals up close and to draw them. So if you're ready, all right, we're off to the Lowry Park Zoo in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> deer and I gotta tell you these animals are huge you wouldn't believe how oh they're not that big after all uh, anyway uh, take a look at those antlers though aren't they beautiful uh, they fall off every year and every year they grow back bigger and only the males have the antlers and they use them to fight against each other for the affections of a female deer and I've got a real neat trick to show you how to draw these animals and that way is to start with a few shapes to build on now, I'm using my pencil here, and we start with his face. Make a shape like that, which is like a teardrop bend on the side, but not coming to a point. And right here, an S. All the way back, coming very gracefully around, and that's the front of his neck. All right, now if I got that, all we have to do is go back and start building. Right here, we'll make an eye, which is like a football shape. And we'll color it all in. I've got white space, and maybe a little bit down there. Okay, some eyelashes, and an eyebrow up. And we're going to darken in that shape that we started with. And right here, we're going to put a nose in, and darken that, and a smile. And the bottom of his head, right like that. Now, okay, now we're going to put his ear in, which is a teardrop shape. Looks a little like a leaf, too, doesn't it? And some detail inside. And these lines are going to indicate like a little bit of shading or a shadow and the other ear is peeking out the back all right now for those antlers up and down you can't go wrong whatever you do would look good on this great animal some hairs and then just double that line because there's the other one peeking out the back all right now one nice flowing line without picking your pen up right around and up and down and then stop same thing on the front like this then I'm going to stop, and now let's put his back legs in. Now, big strong thighs because they're great jumpers. And come back, and down, and for his feet. Now, it tapers down to a very nice, graceful foot like that, and come back up. And that's one. And let's put the uh, bottom part in, and now let's have the other leg coming out this way and coming up like there. Now that one is in the other, on the other side and it's being shaded a little bit by his body and let's not forget that tail. After all, this is a white tail deer. Alright, now his front legs are down. That also is going to taper to his foot. And put the other one just like this and the great leapers and jumpers and let's have him doing just that. And he's landed on his front legs, and there's a little shadow there. And let's see what else we can do. Mm, I don't know, it looks a little like Rudolph, doesn't he? Let's put a line like that for some detail in him, and a ground line, and some color. There's a little bit of brown. And as we said, these antlers are very interesting because these antlers, they come off each year. And they grow back and they get a little bit larger. Let's put some color up in the ears. Just like that. And I'll leave the underside a little bit lighter. How's that? 
on the back of his tail. Top part is brown, bottom's white, and some green. Yeah, that's a pretty sketch. A little yellow here. And there he is. Beautiful white-tailed deer. Pretty neat, huh? All right, this next one is an animal that was incredible to see. And his name was Jordy. Jordy the rhinoceros. <laughs> so let's start with a shape that looks a little bit like a lima bean. And I'm not going to fill it all in. I'm going to stop in places because I want the legs to be here. And if I continue it around, see, it would be like a lime bean kind of bent in there now. Let's put his legs in. He's got these big, strong back legs, I'll tell you. And they support this massive body with these big feet with toes like that. And the other one, peek him back here. And we'll darken that in. And you wouldn't believe this rhinoceros. I didn't even know this, but they like to hang out in water. And he has this little lagoon there, and he used to love to like wallow in that little lagoon and blow bubbles. You go in the water and blow bubbles. Can you believe that? Now, one of my favorite things to draw on a rhinoceros, where do you see this, is on the knees. Watch this. A little swirly. Look at that. That makes it a real cartoon. All right, now for his head. Now, this is a little bit tricky. So, what you do is you make a half circle like that. Then it tapers down to like a nose and then a smile coming back and then a small lower jaw. And his nostril is real big right there and his eye, well, it sits real low on his face like that. And it's kind of sleepy looking. Now, little ears, little funny ears coming off the top on this massive animal. And let's kind of define his head. And now, Jordy didn't have his horn. You know, they rub him off like they keep grinding them against like the rocks and everything like and it's made of the same material that our fingernails are made out of. Carotin or something I think they, they said and it's the same kind of material and it comes off if they keep rubbing it and it will grow back if he stopped doing that but he didn't. But I put his horn in anyway because I figured he wants it to come back. He just has to stop it, uh, biting his nails a little bit anyway. Now if you notice He's got his body in like segments. It looks like he's a patchwork quilt, doesn't he? So I'm going to do that right here. And it got that way, they told me, because of the sun. Now this part right here might be with circles. Gives him a lot of texture. It makes him a pretty interesting animal, too. And let's see, over here, let's give him lines. And over here, we'll give him lines, but we'll wave those lines a little bit. Uh, let's see, over here, let's give him squares. Pretty cool animal, huh? All right, now let's see. Well, that takes care of him. Let's put some color into this guy. All right. Do some gray. And we'll leave that horn white. And he's swimming in there, and he was having a great old time. What's the plural for rhinoceroses? Is it rhinoceroses? Rhinoceros I I think it's rhinoceros I. Rhinoceros, why not? That's a hard one to say, folks. Let's put some brown on the bottom here where he's standing. And let's see. Make this guy shine like the cool animal he is. Now, I got a great one for you. Remember I said I would draw my old friend here? Well, let's do that one right now. This is kind of a quickie. And he's, in, he's a baboon, the mandrel. And let's start with a pear shape. Just like this. And it tapers down like that. All right, here goes. Now, right about here, we'll make a line straight across and give him his eyes, which are kind of close together and very, very mysterious. Leave a little bit of white in there. And let's darken that line like where his eyebrows are. And let's give a line up there for his forehead. Now, this is his nose, and it's red. We'll color it in in a moment. And down here, well, sort of like a triangle shape. And let's put some nostrils in. Okay, now his mouth, well, mouth smiles like that. And now these cheeks, that's another great part, which is a bright blue, and we'll do that. Some lines in it. And let's see, well, let's put some hair in, because that's all it is. It's a matter of putting hair on this pear shape. And his beard's kind of white. 
Now let's get the chalks out and color my friend in. All right, now let's use blue for the cheeks and some red. I'm going to use my cartoon maroon for his red because I want a nice vivid red. When you're coloring in, notice you don't have to color right up to that line all the time. It's not like a coloring book. Leaving a little bit of white just creates a little highlight or shine or interest. I'll use a little bit of green for his face. And I'm going to leave pretty much the white alone, but maybe just a drop of brown on top. And leave the bottom part because it looks like he has a white beard whenever you see one of these great looking animals, the mandrel. So the Lowry Park Zoo is a great place to go. And maybe you have a zoo or an aquarium near you. It's a great place to bring your sketch pad, draw the animals up close. And now, stay tuned for Cartoon Doodle Tricks. Welcome to today's Cartoon Doodle Tricks, and welcome to you guys. Thanks for coming. Everybody okay? Yes. Okay, now, today, in keeping with the show's theme, animals, we'll do animal alphabet tunes. So, I need a letter from the alphabet. How about you? A. A. A, you start right at the beginning. Okay, that's good. We'll start, and you know what? We'll do a small A. Just like that. Okay, now, A stands for? I won't tell you. You have to guess. We'll put a diamond shape right there. And a big upper lip, and let's see, a big smile, and a big lower lip like that. Now let's see, let's put in some eyes, looking at us off to the side. And let's see, we'll put ears up top. Who knows what this is starting to look like? A monkey. A monkey. A monkey. A monkey. That's right, A's for ape. And there you have it. Okay, you like that one? Yeah. Okay, okay I need another letter. How about you? R. R. R is a great one. Okay, so I'll start with the letter right in the center. Let's see. Oh, this is a cute one. Where do you see this one? Ready? Okay. R stands for rodent. So, we'll put a circle right on the end there, and we'll color it in. And let's put some whiskers in, and coming out that way. And that's going to be one ear, and let's put some eyes in. Some eyebrows and a big smile. And here's an ear. And let's see, let's put his front arm in there, just like that. And he's peeking out of his mouse hole. Like that one. I'll put a little dark there and a little bit here. Make some kind of pop out a little bit. You like that one, guys? Yeah. Okay, now tight. this next one, we're going to do another animal from the word. Okay, ready? Spell lion with me. Ready? L-I-O-N. Perfect. Okay. This is cool. Ready? Right up here, I'm going to draw a couple eyes and an eyebrow. And right out of that circle, one line going there, one line going there. And these circles are whiskers. Do you see the line yet? No, not yet. But it's coming. And let's give him a chin with like a little beard. Uh, let's see what else. Some ears. Another one right there. And you're saying, what's all this stuff? Well, I'll show you. This is the lion's mane. And we just continue that around. And let's see, we'll go down this side. And right down here. And there it is, the lion. And uh, how'd you like that one, all right? Yes, yeah. okay, yeah. That's all the time we have for today, and I hope you've enjoyed it at home, and I hope you guys liked it. And for our tip of the day, open your sketch pad and open up your imagination. Sometimes, just general doodling come up with all kinds of ideas, right? Yes. I'm Bruce Blitz saying thanks for being with me, and help me out, guys. Keep, keep on, on cartooning. cartooning. That's right, keep on cartooning. <laughs>